This one's a little near and dear to my heart because it's like I called it, but it's not. It's also like, you know, when you call something, but it's also not really necessarily a good thing. Like you don't like, you're like oh, that's going to happen, but it's kind of a bad thing. <laughs> this is kind of that uh, feeling. The Fed is going to launch instant payments with the FedNow system in July. This will eventually get tied into inevitably a cbdc a central bank digital currency this is kind of the beginning of the end of the us dollar as paper money and i know a lot of people think that's not going to happen but it, it is I, I like i'll say it right now paper money is already kind of phased out a lot i think it's going to go away completely and the thing is is like if it goes to a cbdc and they're dispersing a us dollar through a digital system and everybody's just plain stops accepting cash, then cash is worthless. There'll be probably be like a cash turn in time or some crap like that. And then this is where you'll be stuck. Obviously the big notes here is other people say, you know, I'm not gonna use the Fed now system, but as soon as they're paying out your tax return on the Fed now system, you're gonna take it. And that, that's just the way it is. The adoption here is just going to be super easy. They're going to utilize it for Medicare, Medicaid, all the government services. If you're on anything like that, it's just, it, it, it's, it's the way it is, right? It is what it is. And there, <laughs> until it isn't, and everybody starts to adopt Bitcoin, which is also what we're going to be talking about today, because that is happening too. So this is getting really interesting, but on Wednesday, March 15th, the U.S. Federal Reserve unveiled details about its native FedNow instant payment system. The service will launch with a robust set of core clearing and settlement functionality and value-added features. Additional features and enhancements will be integrated with future releases to continue checking the safety, resiliency, and innovation of boxes. So, that's so funny. The, the the thing here is they're going to use basically an outdated digital system, in my humble opinion, but we'll, we'll see if we get some more details on that. And they're, they're going to try to convince you that it's more secure to hold your funds in the FedNow system that is directly tied to the Federal Reserve and bypasses banks and, as opposed to holding it in banks. That's going to be the first step. And the thing is that you need to realize about this is that I posted this on YouTube in the community section earlier, but this is going, the, the first battle that's happening and you can already see it happening right now is it's going to be the federal government or the federal reserve, whatever you want to call it, right? If you can detach it from the federal government as much as you want with names, it's still the same thing. The thing is, it's going to be consolidation of the entire banking system into that. You'll be a direct connect. We are going the incorrect direction. So if you're into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, you're probably familiar with the, per, the, the idea of decentralization and, and how important that is, right? Decentralization is what everybody preaches. That's important because you're held accountable by the network and a, a great number of people and nodes that are running this and finding consensus. The more people that are providing consensus, the less likely there is for basically effery, right? I'm trying not to curse anymore on this YouTube channel thanks to the new algorithm, but you get my point. The thing is, is we're, this goes in the wrong direction. It goes from banks, which provides some sort of decentralization because you can as a customer choose to utilize one bank over another they still have to you know participate within certain regulations that are sent down from the federal government but you know you can be a good customer to a good bank that you believe in or whatever it may be that's going to go down to well now your only choice is the federal government eventually so the first battle that's going to take place is going to be the banks versus the federal reserve that's what's happening within the next five to 10 years. Seems to be accelerating a little bit faster than I even expected to be completely honest with you. So I'll be curious to see what happens with the CBDC stuff and the announcements for that, but it will definitely be tied into this FedNow payment system and adoption will happen out of necessity for people that are struggling financially. 
This is just a manner in which the monetary system can be messed with more effectively directly by the federal government of the United States, which means that the value of the U.S. dollar will inevitably go down from this, in my humble opinion, right? Because we're already seeing massive printing to bail out the banks or, you know, bail out the individuals. I wouldn't be surprised if you start getting your bailouts. <coughs> Excuse me. I wouldn't be surprised if you get your bailouts or your reimbursements from the failed banks through the FedNow system in the future as well. According to the press release, the Fed will begin the formal certification of participants in the first week of April. Notably, early adopters will complete a customer testing and certification program in order to enable transactions via the system. In June, the Fed and certified participants will conduct production validation activities. This will be done to confirm the readiness for the final launch in July. As far as the certification is concerned, it will encapsulate a, quote, comprehensive testing curriculum, end quote, with defined expectations for operational readiness and network experience. The press release outlined that many early adopters have already declared their intention to start using the service in July. In fact, they include diver a diverse mix of financial institutions of all sizes, the largest processors, and the U.S. Treasury. Wow. Ken Montgrumpy, Montgomery, <laughs> Montgrumpy, <laughs> the first vice president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, and FedNow program executive said we could be more we couldn't be more excited about the forthcoming FedNow launch which will enable every participating financial institution the smallest to the largest and from all corners of the country to offer a modern instant payment solution. I'm sorry Mr. Montgomery, but we already have one and it's called cryptocurrency and the people run it. We don't need your fed now payment system we already got a system that we're trying to adopt seems to be getting adopted more the more you mess with the banks and do stuff like this so fair warning furthermore he urged the financial institutions yeah so to partners to move full steam ahead with preparations to join the fed now service long Gumbry, also went on to indicate the availability of the service is only the beginning. According to him, growing the network of participating financial institutions will be the key for it to thrive. And this is where the battle takes place, right? If they start replacing it, the banks that participate in, in federal credit unions that participate, well, that's one thing. The ones that don't, well, maybe we see them go. Maybe we're already seeing that calling now. And that's the true reason behind these 186 banks that are similar to SVB, the odd closure of the Signature Bank, and so on. Commenting on the leading edge payment system, Tom Barkin, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond and FedNow program executive sponsor said, the launch reflects an important milestone in the journey to help financial institutions serve customer needs for instant payments to better support nearly every aspect of our economy. Our economy, Referring to the Fed's economy, not to the people's economy. Remember what happens here, too, is there becomes a restriction between what the, how do we put this? What the institutions have access to and what the people have access to. And the problem is here is this gets really awkward really, really quickly, especially when we already start to look at like Venezuela and Argentina the individuals moves into stable currencies or cryptocurrencies in general to protect themselves. And no matter how many restrictions that keep getting put onto cryptocurrency, either by the UN or by the individual country's governments or by the banking system, that if you oppress the public enough and you don't keep the economy propped up enough, you're going to have a natural Departicipation is, I guess, what we could call it from that particular financial system. So this is actually risking, you know, in my humble opinion, it's it's more risky for the U.S. dollar and its value than it is good. 
Um, because what you end up having, like I said, is this, this departicipation effect that can begin to take hold, especially if it is coincides with the, the shuttering of the banking system and the printing of dollars, right? The devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.